Swiss family businesses contribute 64% of the country's GDP and account for two-thirds of jobs in Switzerland. They are responsible for both family and business matters and have to maintain a balance between them. We at PwC give Swiss family businesses a voice. I'm Mercedes Schmitz and I'm working at PwC Switzerland in the segment of family businesses. And I'm quite fortunate to sit together with Dr. Alexander Köberle Schmidt once more and to have a nice conversation on the topic of family offices. He's actually an expert at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Germany and Switzerland. And Alexander has a long expertise in succession planning, family constitution, governance, as well as on the topic family office. He supports entrepreneurs on complex topics around the world, but is also an author for several books and a speaker on the mentioned topics. So today we would like to focus more on the governance structure of a family office and how it can be structured on an operational level. So welcome, Alexander. Yes, welcome. To start the conversation and to get into the topic, um, I would like to get back a bit to the tasks of a family office just to make our audience have a better understanding in, in terms if they haven't heard the previous podcast. What are the tasks of a family office? And the tasks are, it starts with wealth management. It goes to financial bookkeeping and controlling. It can be about legal taxation and succession issues. Uh, the family can office can deal about all family governance uh, mechanisms. It can take care about the family philanthropic investments and uh, foundations and for sure it can uh, support uh, the individuals in terms of convenience and concierge services. This is actually the set of tasks a family office can take over. And then the following question would be who is actually taking over all those tasks? And normally we're speaking about the family officer and maybe there are also other employees, but what are then the expectations For a family officer? I think in this set of tasks of a family office as a legal structure, the family officer is then the CEO of this business, this office. And as a CEO um, of a family office of this business, he or she should take care about leading the employees of this entity organizing the, the whole family office. He or she should be responsible for the cost planning, the budget, should be responsible for quality management. That's also important in terms of what is the right reporting towards the owners. Does he understand all the risks and can he control the risks? Is the organization compliant with what is expected? So those are the, the tasks of the family office in terms of managing the firm. Most of the time, the family officer is also an expert in one or two asset classes and there he or she also takes over responsibility in managing and organizing the investments in those asset classes. So actually, those are the, the tasks of the family officer of a firm. And what is, I think, also interesting is in terms of what do we as a family expect from a family officer? What are the skills and what are the, the competencies a family officer should have? And I think he should act in terms of being a very a generalist for the firm and acting in the interest of the family for increasing the wealth or uh, having a stable wealth development and he or she should also have a high service orientation that includes that he or she acts in the interest of the the owners not in their own interest hopefully and should be there a loyal person that is trustworthy and the family can really rely on especially also in difficult uh, difficult times so you just mentioned that he is actually the one acting as the CEO of the family office and he should also act in the interest of the owners. So from my own experience working together with family businesses, I would expect it's sometimes quite difficult to have an external non-family member sitting in the leading seat actually, so either as a CFO or CEO. So what might be potential tensions between the family officer 
and actually the owner. I think the families, they want to be informed and they want to make some investment decisions by themselves. And what the family officer wants, he wants to have a stable job. He wants to perform the, his, his job well. And he needs to understand what he can decide by himself and when he needs to ask the family. So which investment decision can he do by himself and when does he need to ask the family? To make this simple, when the family says we are in real estate and the family says we are in real estate in Zurich and only housing, then it's simple for the family officer to make a decision whether I'm going to buy this house or being in the investment consortium or not. When the family says we do investments in real estate, wherever it, it is, this is too broad for a family officer than to make decisions by himself. Because when there is an investment in the US, there is a real estate investment in France, uh, Great Britain, or so on, then he or she needs to go back to the family and uh, ask them. And I think that's important. What can I decide by myself? And when does the family want to be involved in the decision? And sometimes there are investments like holy cow investments, the family officer should not touch. And therefore, the family needs to define which investments are in this holy cow category and which are not. And that's a question the family officer needs to ask the family to be able to act independently and to be able to act in line with the interests of the of the family and of the owners of the the assets so you just said that the family officer has to ask the family what they want to invest in but i would say some of those family members they are either living abroad they are maybe not so into financial topics so is there somehow another option to make decisions in, in, in what you want to invest. So are there other options for the family yeah. officer to consult? I think especially when the family gets bigger and not all family members, as you, you were describing it, cannot be here in Zurich with their uh, family office, then I think you can install an, an investment committee, experts, possibly also a family member involved there in this uh, family council experts dealing uh, for you as an owner with all the relevant investment issues. So this family, um, th this investment council could help um, or could give advice uh, when you want to invest in, into new assets or could help in um, finding new investment possibilities. This uh, investment council could also control and monitor the family officer and uh, could also evaluate asset managers and help in, in, in this way. It could have a long-term perspective on the, on the development of the assets and could also help in setting the goals towards the family office and towards the family officer, what he or she should achieve in the different asset classes. So this is an external or a body with external persons that help you as a family, especially when the family grows, to make the right investment decisions. But now we have the family officer, we have maybe this kind of investment committee, we have other employees dealing with different tasks, maybe taxes and so on. Who's actually taking care about the costs? I mean, is it the family and how the costs are split between the family members? Is it covered by the company that is maybe still in the background or what's, what's the general... This question is crucial because uh, I see some families that get into a conflicting situation when they don't deal this question about who takes over which costs or covers which costs. This is in relation to who can be customer of the family office, who can uh, get the concierge services of the family office. So the, the family needs to define who can 
be part of this service agreement of this family office. And after having done this, we are directly at the question of what are the costs and who covers those costs. And this can be the case that all customers, all family members um, cover the costs equally. Or it can be that depending on the, the size of the, the investments uh, you do as a person over the family office, you find a structure, a percentage. So those who invest more cover more costs. Those who invest less cover less costs of the family office. Or you can do this by time. Those customers who use the family office more often pay more than those who use it less. And uh, there, there are different uh, possibilities to cover the costs. Um, and I think this is crucial for a well-running family office. I mean, this already leads to the next question in terms of how can the family organize itself. So now we discussed more the governance within the family office, but for sure the family itself has to make clear decisions on who is actually eligible to uh, profit from the services of the family offices, who is covering what kind of assets maybe when we go back to the asset allocation and so on. So I think it would be an ideal topic to discuss the family governance within the family office during another podcast. And um, I'm looking forward to this podcast, but also want to thank you for today's conversation. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you.